I'm here with uh, Paul Charton and we're just going to have a talk about Eddie, Eddie Bowman who has been inducted into the Workington Towns Hall of Fame. But uh, Eddie played 199 games for Workington Town between 1970 and 1978. He played seven Cumberland games and he played four games for Great Britain. I have with me here today Paul Charlton. We're just going to have a little, a little chat about, about Eddie. And Paul, first of all, the, the Tom Mitchell lured Eddie to Workington Town from Whitehaven. Tell us your thoughts about Eddie when he first came to Workington in 1970. Well, when he first came to Workington, um, uh, uh, Eddie had the credentials to, uh, to go where he eventually went to and that was to the top. Um, at that particular time, he, he was still learning his trade. He'd been shifted from second row to prop, and um, blind side prop, by the way. And um, he, he he had a bit to learn. And obviously, when he came into Workington, he was playing a, a little bit of higher standard football and Whitehaven. It was going to help him. And um, and to see his progression within the game after coming to Workington was um, tremendous. It was great. He was a tough forward. He was. He was a bit of a nugget, was Eddie. Um, he lived by the sword or died by the sword. Um, if you wanted anybody taken out in the game, Eddie was the guy to do it. He, he wouldn't. Um, he would just hang around and hang around, and next moment, you see a stretcher coming on the field, and <laughs> off the guy went. I always remember um, we played at Waddington one day, and this guy from Waddington, the uh, the prop, he was only a young sort of a fellow, was pushing. Push, pushing himself around a bit, and uh, Eddie was getting a bit sick of it, and uh, in, they were headbutting in the scrums as they were going down. This young fellow was, he was trying to give it to Eddie, and uh, ten minutes later, <laughs> see you later, he'd gone. <laughs> so, we, you know, um, Eddie could handle himself, and uh, he could play football as well. He was, he was also a master of the offload of oh. the ball, wasn't he? Tell us about that. Oh, it was tremendous. You know, I used to get a lot of tries off Eddie, like I did off Les Gawley. Uh, they had a special way of uh, getting round the player and getting the ball round the player. Uh, was that, you just had to be on the end of things. They, they did, had done all the hard work and um, we, obviously we worked this in training and, you know, and, and trial matches and things like that and it, it, it started to come off. And uh, then we just progressed down there and it became a lot easier, you know. I, people knew where they were running to and where to run from. And it was just all practice, Gary. But uh, Eddie with his offloading was... That's why he played for Great Britain. He could do that. Eddie, um, he came through the junior ranks. Um, I think, I'm pretty sure his first club was a, a club called Myris RLFC. And... Um, I don't think they were, they went for very long. I think they went about two or three years, uh, and uh, then they folded. And, and um, I'm not quite sure where Eddie went after that. Kells. It was Kells. It was Kells, and um, obviously um, he was growing his stature. He was getting in the uh, experience and everything, and, and, and knowing what to do when he went on the field. And he was progressing down that uh, track uh, at great strides. He started off as a centre, did you know that? I didn't know that, Gary. Yeah. No, I didn't know Eddie Bowman started off as a centre. He started Eddie. growing up. And then he started growing up. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, you, you shocked me there, because I always thought Eddie played in the forwards, but um, obviously you've done your homework. And, um, well, obviously he must have had a bit of pace, which he had, and he had the skill as well to be playing centre. And uh, he just put a bit more weight on He liked the beer. He, uh, he liked to buy a, a pint or two, but um, obviously he did what he, he wanted to achieve and he, he got there at the finish. But one of Wigan's great wins was the Lancashire Cup at Wildersville. Yeah. It was, it was, it's been quite that Eddie gave a powerful forward display that day. Tell us more about Eddie on that day. Oh, he, he just led the forwards um, from the start. You know, he he, he was one that uh, didn't take a backward step, and he was always going forward, and and he, he was punishing with his tackles as well. Um, and we overcome Wigan with our powerful forwards that particular day. Uh, the back scored a couple of tries, but it was the forwards that, which in every game makes it, and our forwards stood up that day, turned Wigan over, and come away with Language Cup, which is I think was the first time working, wasn't it? That's right. 
there, there was a bit of history. After winning the, the Lancashire Cup that day, Tom Mitchell said that he'd take the team to the Benidorm in Spain. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You and Eddie, being the most experienced players in the in that team, became the tour leaders. When you're on the bus going to the airport to catch the plane, Eddie kept telling the inexperienced travellers of, of what to do and what to expect. He was advising them to keep their passports safe at all times. Yeah, yeah. Tell us more about that story. Well, as far as I can recall, um, we were, we were in charge and Edward and myself were um, telling the players you know, to look after their passports, blah 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 and uh, don't lose them as you could be in a spot of trouble. He was telling everybody to look after their passport. Yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. Everybody hopped off and had to go to the, uh, the passenger terminal. That's right, that's right. right. That's Eddie, Eddie, Eddie left his passport on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, he, he did. He, 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 uh, we had to go to uh, to try and get him a new visa, um, and that would be about two hours away. We're, I can't remember what the town was or the city was now, but we had to go to the consulate and um, try and get a new a new visa for him. Um, we didn't get much, uh, what would you say, um, help from them. Um, we, we went all that way and, and got a rebuff. You know, the guy didn't really want to know. You know, whether the, they were familiar with all this going on with other people coming for, for new passports, uh, I've, I've, I've no idea, but we didn't get one. So I don't know what happened. Uh, I, I don't know what happened at the end of the day. Uh, and I know he got back to England. I know, I know um, when we left uh, Benidorm, he, he was left behind with Boxer Walker and a, um, a couple of the other players. Uh, Derek McMillan, I think, was as well, uh, was left behind. And uh, Eddie was left behind because he had no passport. You know, so how he got back, I don't, I don't know yet. Eddie's joined a, a, a great group of players uh, into the Workington Towns Hall of Fame. What, what would you like to say to Eddie? Well, with all of the great players that's came um, out of Workington, uh, Workington Town, and uh, being inducted into the Hall of Fame, you know, <laughs> to do that is something special, you know, to be up there with these great players and. Uh, to be inducted is a tremendous feat and it's only with hard work and a, a, a lot of help from people as well and a lot of ability from the fellow himself uh, and the player he's got to have a goal set and a mindset and he's, he's got to be heading for that direction and uh, these players have done that and uh, Eddie has done that as well and uh, Eddie I made I, I hope you have a good night tonight um, in Workington and uh, by the way, I'll be over there, which is beginning of December. I'll just miss the uh, your induction, which I'd love to have been there, but uh, I'll catch up with you, mate, when we get uh, back and we'll have a beer together. Uh, all the best, mate, and um, see you soon.